Hello YouTube, this is Ben with the uh, African Cichlid Tank and today's topic are five challenges that uh, every cichlid keeper has to resolve and uh, let's go ahead and get uh, get right into them let's start off with the most basic one and that tank, tank size uh, I think if you spend a little time on uh, African Cichlid uh, blogs you'll see the consensus is to uh, go with the largest tank that you can afford and that can fit the space. I started off with a 30 and outgrew that very, very quickly. Doubled to a 60 and now I'm looking at a 120. The um, 60 is barely uh, big enough for the fish I have in it now and uh, will become certainly too small when the uh, Frontosa and the Fusco start to acquire some of their uh, potential size, some of these fish can get you know between uh, six and uh, twelve inches, and at that point they're going to uh, become a bit too large for this tank. So <clears throat> tank size, and uh, certainly the advice: go with the biggest you can go with, even if it means holding off a little bit, saving a little bit of money. And, uh, and acquiring a bigger tank up front. The next challenge you're going to have to uh, resolve is what type of fish. In my case, if you know cichlids, you'll notice I have a mixed tank. I have peacocks in here, haps, some mabuna, like this very peaceful yellowtail here, and my uh, electric yellow back here, who is kind of the tank boss. See them back there moving, moving around some of the substrate, and uh, I also have some clown luches in here and a mix of peacocks and haps. So <clears throat> I would say if I could do it over again, I probably would go uh, straight, straight peacocks, maybe some peacocks and haps. But um, I like the mabuna; they're very colorful. They're great. They have a great attitude. I like the way they like to hang out and create caves. Uh, every time I do a re-rockscape, uh, the electric yellow claims claims an area and uh, starts digging. And in just a matter of uh, maybe an hour or two, I have a, an entire area dug out. So <clears throat> I guess uh, if I could do it all over again, I'd go with one one species. Probably I, I prefer I like the colors of the peacocks. You can see this little flame tail here. Good example. Love the colors of the peacocks. But of course, there are some haps that are spectacular, like I'm sure this uh, Fusco, as he's starting to age here, he's trying to get some beautiful color. So I'd say maybe haps and peacocks, maybe open up or start a different tank with Mabuna. I've tried tro uh, some Trophius, and um, you know they they uh, they didn't really make it. They survived. Uh, I even tr and I tried a Victorian in here for a little while, a thick skin. Uh, they survived. Uh, they did okay, but you know there's a big difference between surviving, uh, surviving, and thriving. And so you can have some fish that'll survive, but they're not going to thrive um, if, for any reason at all, maybe just because the diet is different. I I include some veggie pellets in the in the food that I feed these guys just for the mabuna. But um, if I had a mabuna only tank, the uh, the veggie percentage would be much much higher and uh, they would probably be thriving even more even though if you look at them you would say they were very very healthy um, so uh, kind of a, a, a sub category to the type of fish is deciding whether you're going to go with juveniles uh, juvenile fish juvies or you're going to go with uh, adults you know adult males colored up adult males uh, there's a lot more cost involved in uh, buying colored up adult males. Uh, if something goes wrong, uh, you get uh, some parasites, a neck attack, um, some, some disease uh, gets into the tank, you're losing big bucks real quick. Uh, so there's that to consider. The advantage, of course, you get a, a, an all-male colored up tank right away, so that's a big plus point. Uh, I have a mix in here of fish that I picked up as juveniles, and some turned out to be males. The ones that didn't uh, are in a, a back tank or were rehomed, as were some of the uh, Mabunas that I picked up originally, like a Pseudotrophius, um, a Panga Pseudotrophius, 
and Oratis. Uh, these were just a little bit too, uh, they were just a little bit too mean, uh, too aggressive. Maybe there's some, some out there like that that are not, but, but the ones I had certainly were. So they were rehomed. So uh, certainly making those kinds of decisions, uh, you can pick up juvenile unsexed cichlids very, very inexpensively. And if you uh, lose one or two to disease or a couple turn out to be female, it's okay. You haven't spent that much. But you spend $45 for a fish and that fish dies on you or, um, you know, that can, that can set you back a bit. Another important decision you're going to have to make is a filtration. There's a lot to be said for the amount of agitation that gets created by a hang-on back filter, uh, the ease with which you can uh, service a hang-on back filter. I, I, uh, I originally had this tank in a TV room, and so I wanted it quieter. I didn't like the splashing, and so I went with uh, a couple canister filters. I'm very happy with them. These are Sunsun Sun 302s, as those of you who watch my videos know. And I can you can stuff them with a lot of media. And they do move a lot of water. If you can see up here, I have a lot of water motion occurring. I have the outlets. Because I've, I raised the temperature recently because of some ick I was dealing with, I have a lot of water motion occurring, a lot of surface agitation. And so you can get a lot of motion going with your, uh, with your uh, canister filters. Um, HOBs are great. Uh, Hang-on back filters are great. Um, inexpensive. I don't even. I um, I have a hang-on back filter in my uh, grow-up tank out back. I don't even buy the filters that are recommended by Whisper. Uh, I just cut. I just cut filter uh, pond filter media, and uh, just use that. I don't use uh, carbon, so it uh, works out perfect. And then I just rinse rinse that filter out in. Uh, aquarium water when I do water changes and it works perfectly. Um, how about a stump or how about just a sponge that, uh, filter inside the tank? Those all have advantages certainly as you get into bigger tanks stumps become very very popular. Um, I'm not that familiar with stumps. The concept is pretty straightforward running water from one point to another running it through a certain media and filtration all that makes sense seems very simple and um, the stumps I think would be a good idea for a, for a bigger tank. Also, of course, gives you a place to give a fish a timeout, which I kind of like. So uh, in my case, I've gone with canisters. I like them. And uh, if you go with canisters, you have to decide, or if you go with any filter, really, you have to decide what kind of media am I going to put into this, uh, into this filter. It's another decision you're going to have to make. Do I go low end? I mean, you can put lava rock in there. You can get some uh, polyfill, uh, you know, crib batting. Uh, you can go real inexpensive, or you can go high-end, get some marine pure ceramic type uh, media. You can go with uh, Biohome Ultimate, throw some Purigen in there. Uh, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of options. Do your research. Go with what fits your budget, what fits your temperament. Uh, some people love uh, going with the inexpensive route. I can totally see that. makes a lot of sense. Other folks like to get the, uh, the better or the, the higher-end media. And um, do some research, find out which, uh, which what will fit your needs best. And, uh, of course, in any of these filter selections, you should uh, do a little research, know about them, know how to set them up, how to line them up, how to maintain them. Another question you're probably going to have to deal with is food, food selection. Some people go with, uh, you know, your, basics, uh, your basic cichlid flakes. Some people who have mabunas like to cut up a cucumber and put it in the tank. Uh, <clears throat> I happen to go with a North Fin. This is the, the food I use. North Fin. And uh, when one of the females, uh, before I set, took all the females out of the tank, uh, had fry, I, I bought some uh, cichlid flakes and would just crumble it up and use that as food. The North Fin food, I've noticed, doesn't cloud the water. also creates a lot of good coloration and uh, good fin growth. You notice the anal fins on, the, uh, on these fish are pretty long and pronounced. You can see the fins on this one here. So um, I noticed uh, nice, very nice uh, fin fins and coloration with North, uh, North Fin. I also notice it doesn't cloud. I had a New Life Spectrum 
still have a little bit of that left that I mix in every now and then, but it, 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 I found it, and this may not be true for you, but I found it to cloud the water a little bit, uh, leave a little more sediment in the substrate than, uh, than North Fin does. And uh, how about lighting? You know, we hear a lot of people talking about LEDs um, versus fluorescents. I have your standard T5 fluorescent, a T5 fluorescent on mine. And, uh, you know, it's a low, wide tank, and so I get plenty light from a, from a fluorescent. And I think it shows the colors. You know, I think the colors uh, show up okay using the fluorescent. And uh, certainly if I had a deeper tank, I'd get an, an LED. But if you're going to get an LED, do some research. You do need a lot of lumens. Some people buy a, an LED at a cut rate, you know, for a good deal and discover that it doesn't really light the tank because it doesn't have, uh, you know, the 10,000 lumens that you need to have to make an LED really effective. So um, lighting is an issue you're probably going to have to uh, decide on. Another one, of course, is uh, that I recently started asking about over at the Tank Talk uh, Facebook page. That's the Facebook page run by um, John Hudson, KG Tropicals, one of my favorite uh, folks in the in the world of uh, of African cichlids, and uh, and that's whether you should add salt. Some people add Epsom salt, um, kosher salt. Uh, in my case, I'm adding uh, some of these. Uh, Cichlid salts, cichlid lake salt, which I think uh, provides some um, some trace minerals that uh, might be lacking in the tap water. And also I've noticed, uh, like on the uh, redfin borlei, he was showing a lot of uh, scarring from banging into rocks. I think he's, uh, I think he's nearsighted. And... Uh, so he would bang into rocks a lot and scratch himself up, and his skin, his scales have been healing a lot, uh, a lot easier, a lot quicker, and his overall scales look better. Maybe I've heard that the salt might help with slime coat. I'm not entirely sure about that. Um, so do you add salt? Do you not add salt? Now, um, I would love for you folks that watch this video to give me your opinion. Um, Tell me a little bit about uh, the topics that I've touched on. Uh, tank size, you know, certainly always it seems to be the bigger is better. Seems to be the sentiment. I'd love to hear what kind of a, a tank size you have. Uh, how about mix of fish? You know, what type of fish do you have in your tank? Are you mixed? Are you strictly peacocks, strictly haps? Some people have what they call predator tanks, where they'll have all just haps, like this guy here. And... Uh, some people are uh, very specific to a certain type, all trophious, like Psychedelic Babe. I think she has some trophious uh, tanks that are very pretty. And uh, But let me, uh, let me know a little bit about your fish mix. How about filtration? What are you using? What do you recommend? How about what kind of media do you use? Uh, let me know in the comments. How about your favorite food? Let's uh, actually turn the comments section of this video into something informative for somebody that, let's say, has just gotten into the hobby. So uh, the mix in your tank, what type of filtration and media are you using? What kind of food are you using? How has it worked for you? Uh, lighting. What's your lighting? What's your preference with lighting? And uh, do you use salt or do you prefer not to use salt? Put your comments below and uh, those who are new to the hobby will benefit from those comments. They'll learn from those comments. And of course, uh, always remember when you're watching videos on YouTube, that those, those are always just one person's opinion. And uh, please always do your own research and find out if what's being said is uh, works for you or is even accurate. Because of course, sometimes you do get wrong information uh, you know, circulating around. Now, some of you with a real good eye will notice that my Ethelnene Chitende, um, this, little, this little guy right here, very cute fish. I picked him up from uh, Amy Temple, Ames, Ames Altitude Aquatics. But he has a little bit of a sunken belly, not an uncommon thing. Uh, my uh, Electric Blue had a sunken belly when I first uh, picked him up at a big box store that might have been from just being underfed. 
And uh, so I started using this, this uh, general cure. And uh, I'll let you folks know how that works in one of my later videos. And uh, we'll see if that helps him to fill out a little bit. Uh, he also is pretty low on the pecking order of the tank. Uh, so there might be, uh, might be that he's just not eating as much. But it does look a lot like sunken belly. And I did lose a couple fish recently. Um, a couple of uh, my favorites, uh, sadly, died on me. And uh, they looked like they went under stress. They didn't lose any color. Uh, they didn't have their fins clamped in. They seemed active all the way till the end, but they seemed to be a little uh, stressed in their breathing and uh, and then stopped eating. So I'm thinking there may have been some, some parasitic infestation that occurred. And so um, I wish I'd treated it sooner, actually, with this general cure. I hear good things about it. Little clown looch there likes to hang out on top of the heater. And sometimes all three of them will line up on there. It's kind of cute. And uh, there's my uh, tangerine tiger. Keep waiting for that one to color up. I'm sure it'll be very pretty when he does. There's the Lawanda. The Lawanda can be a little bit of a jerk. Um, I hear Lawandas can be that way. And I even had someone offer to buy him from me. I might just take him up, take him up on it. All right. So uh, that's all I had to say. Um, I hope uh, this, this helps and to bring a few things to the forefront. And I really would like to get your, your opinions in the comment section as to these different topics. And uh, with the understanding that anything you say there will be read by uh, people who are new to the hobby. And it can help them in setting up their tank, their filtration, and things of this nature. Uh, one topic I didn't touch on, of course, is a substrate. You know, you hear different things about substrate. I have a crushed shell and coral type substrate that helps to buffer. Purpose of it is to buffer. Um, I really like aquariums with sand, uh, but I do need the buffering. Uh, crushed coral would have been fine too. Um, some people wonder if the uh, cichlids can move this stuff around. And I'll tell you, they are constantly moving it around. And uh, I don't think they're having any problem with the fact that it's not a sand-based aquarium. As a matter of fact, I've seen some of the smaller rocks, rocks that are this size, moved to different parts of the aquarium. And uh, one morning I came out and had two good-sized rocks on top of my heater. So uh, they don't really have any problem moving stuff around. It doesn't have to be sand uh, for them to, uh, to move stuff around effectively. There's the uh, Zimbabwe rock, or the Z-rock, with the yellow blaze. I'm really looking forward to that guy coloring up. And of course, one of my favorites, my OB. So that's it for now, folks. Thank you so much. Um, and I do appreciate you uh, watching and uh, commenting, sharing, rating, all that good stuff. I am now officially over 1,000 subs. And uh, that's exciting. And I really thank you guys for and gals for all the support. I really appreciate it. And... Uh, Enjoy the hobby. Thanks.